All right, now, so how do you do this? Because that's what we're known for, is teaching people how to do these things. Not just telling you what you need to do, but tell you how to do it. So here's how you do it. Number one, are you ready? Yes. Renew the mind. Yes. Number one. This is a, a well-thought-out, pre-planned defense. Renew your mind. What? To the word, will of God. Notice how I put those two together. The word is the will. God's will is his word. God's word is his will. So you renew your mind to the word, will of God. Okay? Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brother. I beseech you. I beseech you, brethren, okay, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. What does that mean? Yeah. Keep your body under. Isn't that what he says? Yeah. He was talking about it. We talked about that before, what that means to be sober and to keep your body under, all that kind of stuff, okay? He says that you present your bodies that you keep under, a living sacrifice. That's how you keep it under. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's not outrageous. That's reasonable. <clears throat> and be not conformed to this world. <clears throat> but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Notice transformation only comes by the renewing of your mind. Amen. This is the only verse that tells you how to transform your life. Okay? Now, when you get born again, <clears throat> you change your destiny and your destination. But it does not transform your life. You have to choose to transform your life to, according to the renewing your mind to the word of God so that you live according to your change in spirit. Does that make sense? Okay, now he says, oh, I'll try. <laughs> yeah, so when you get, yeah, as you get born again, <clears throat> you are changing your destiny. <clears throat> but <clears throat> if you, you have to renew your mind to the word of God so that you can transform your life to line up with the life you have now received in the spirit. Wow. Right. And if you do not renew your mind, your life will not be transformed. That means, yeah, when you die, you may still go to be with God, but you're going to live through hell on earth wow. before you get there. Oh, Amen? Yeah. But when you renew your mind to the word of God, listen, you will eliminate all unnecessary suffering. But when you renew your mind to the word of God and you're living according to the word of God, you, you eliminate all unnecessary suffering. And the only necessary suffering is what you suffer as you live godly in Christ Jesus, which is predominantly persecution and then some of the hardships of being a good soldier. That's it. You're not suffering sickness and disease. When you renew your mind of the word of God, you cease suffering those things. Amen? Because they are not the will of God. Now, okay, let's keep going. <clears throat> he says, uh, and be not conformed to this world, verse 2, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, for I say, for I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. There's that word again. Okay. Now, this word soberly is a slight change it's not exactly the same word as the other words, and it, it has to do more with your mind because now your mind is brought into right alignment with truth. So you are to think in accordance with the word that you have renewed your mind to, oh. right? Now, and to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, how do you, number two, that was number one, renew your mind. Number two, the armor of God. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter six, verse 10 it starts and says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then look at verse 11. Put on, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the tactics of the devil. So if you don't put on the armor, you cannot stand against the wiles of the devil. Do you get that? This is how vital it is. Now, so you need to know what the armor is. And we're not going to go into all of it today, but I'm going to read through it fairly quick. But notice he says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, that word put on is one word in Greek. It's the Greek word in duo. Uh -huh. It means to be endued, such as what Jesus said. And you shall be endued with power, with power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Amen? So that's that endowment. Now, that word endued means the Holy Spirit's going to come. And that's the power of the Lord you're going to be strong in is that Holy Spirit in you. And now notice, you're going to be endued with him. He doesn't come... He's not like this shirt, right? It, it, with this shirt, even though it's on me, it's still separate from me. Right. That word in duo means he's going to come upon you. He's going to come within you. And he's going to meld into you. And you're, it's like taking a cloth 
and dipping it into a vat of dye so that the dye goes into every fiber and the dye becomes one with the fabric. Do you get that? So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, his job is to so endue you, to clothe you to the point where his his power literally soaks into you. You get saturated completely and totally and you're endued, you're clothed upon so that he becomes part of you. And he that is joined to the Lord is no longer two, but one spirit with the Lord. Amen. So that it, you cease being separate. Now, when that happens, and I get that, it's his power, but you're wielding it. Why? See, you can't move your arm without the Holy Spirit moving. Why? Because he is absorbed into you, and you're absorbed into him. His life is in you. Your life is hidden in him. And, and you can't even, listen, the devil can't tell where you stop and he starts. <laughs> Amen? As long as you keep this armor on. Because why? Because that armor you look, okay, if that, ooh, that's the armor of God. Who do you think's in that? You'd think it would be God, right? And if the devil sees the armor of God, he don't want to mess with that because there might be God. And even if it's not, it's still his armor, so he can still smack the devil upside the head. Amen? <clears throat> now, it says put on that. It literally means, yeah, uh, of sinking a garment into a vat of dye. And he says, why? Why do you need this? This whole armor so that you can stand against the walls. For we wrestle not. Against flesh and blood. Well, we got to remember that every day. Amen. But against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in, in high places. Now look, verse 13, he says it again. Wherefore, take unto you. First he says, put on. Then he says, take unto you. Now that word take here, he says, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand to stand. So he's really repeating the first thing he said. Okay. Without it, you can't stand. Now, that word take unto you, that is one Greek word. It's a long one, basically. But it is ana lambano is where we get the word lambano, which means to receive. But here he says ana lambano, which means to vigorously take to yourself and make it yours so that no one can rip it away from you. Amen. So that's what he says. Take this armor on and then you find out what the armor is because he tells you here Uh, Verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So what does that mean? These are all things you need to know and have. Okay, truth, righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, But now that feet shod with the gospel of preparation of peace. The Roman shoes, Roman sandals had uh, then they were they're kind of like what today um, with with the um, football shoes, cleats. Very similar purpose. What? To grip the ground and give you something to push off from. Or when you dig your feet in, to be able to stand and you can't be moved. In other words, you're locking into the earth. And that's what he's saying. He says, have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What does that mean? That means that when you understand the gospel of peace, that you have peace with God. Now you are prepared because that will give you the, the f- a foot to stand on or a leg to stand on, as people say. Right. Why? Because now you can dig in and you know you're right with God and you have the peace of God because now you're at peace with God and the devil can't move you because you have dug in and he ain't moving you. And that's why he said, having done all stand, stand. Right. And and yeah, let him push. Let him do it. Why? Because it ain't going to matter because you ain't going to move. Why? Because you're standing. You see, you can't stand and run at the same time. Right. So you're going to stand. Now, he says, and look at verse 16. Above all, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. We talked about that this week, as a matter of fact. Those fiery darts were not little pub darts, okay? These were javelins, usually around three foot, three to six foot long sometimes. And they were meant to throw and they were meant to be able to pierce uh, armor and weaponry and that kind of stuff. But now notice he says, but your shield of faith... You can quench every fiery dart because they would set them on fire sometimes and that way the person would catch on fire whenever they got hit. But he says, these, your shield can stop those. Every, every, not some, every. You got that? He says right there, all. He says all, uh, which is the Greek word panta. It means every, okay? So that shield can put out every, all, fiery darts of wicked. And then he says, take the helmet of salvation, Okay, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Notice the only offensive weapon you have is the word of God. 
Well, how do you use it? You use it with the, how do we overcome? The blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony. You put that word out and you speak the word, you speak the word, you speak, and every time you do, you're chopping. One chop may not do it, but you keep speaking the word. And when you keep speaking the word, you keep chopping, you keep chopping, and that thing will cut through. Amen? Then he says, and praying always with all prayer and supplicate all prayer. That means all kinds of prayer. That means there's more than one kind of prayer. I'm fixing to teach on that real soon, okay? All the different kinds of prayer. And it says, uh, and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto. Now that watching, that's that be sober, be vigilant. That's that watching, okay? Thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now I'm going to give you this more in the Greek and then we'll, we'll be done with it. But notice in Ephesians chapter six, verse 10, it says this. Finally, be constantly strengthened in the Lord and in the active effectiveness of the might that is inherent in him. Clothe yourselves, be saturated with the full armor of God to the end that you will be able to hold your ground against the very strategies of the devil. Because our wrestling is not against blood and flesh, but against the principalities, against the authorities, spiritual, okay, against the world rulers of this darkness, against spirit forces, and I love the way this is, of perniciousness, okay, that just means evil, okay, in the heavenly places. On this account, now remember, this is all from the original Greek, on this account, take to yourself at once and once for all. What does that mean? That means you don't have to, you don't have to get up every day. Okay, I'm putting on the helmet of Sabbath and go through this ritual thing. That's what he says you do it and you do it once and for all. In other words, put it on, don't take it off. Whoa. Now think about it, because if you take off your helmet of salvation every evening when you go to bed, <laughs> if you die in your sleep, you go to hell. Why? Because you take off the helmet of salvation. So you keep that helmet on there. Why? And if you keep the helmet of salvation on there and you stay sober-minded during the day, guess what? You're going to have good dreams, not nightmares. Come on. Let's go. God will give you visions and dreams and speak to you. And when you wake up, you'll be so pumped. And you're, man, the word of God will just be coming out of you. And it gets fun. Amen? And so he says, and take, up, take to yourself at once and once for all, the complete armor of God in order that you may be able to resist in the day, that pernicious day, and having achieved all things, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your loins in the realm of truth and having clothed yourself with the breastplate of righteousness, knowing you are right with God, and having sandaled your feet with a firm foundation of the good news of peace. In addition to all these, taking to yourself the shield of faith by means of which you will be able to quench all the fiery arrows of the pernicious one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God through the instrumentality of every prayer. How are you using these things? You use the word of God in prayer. What does that mean? You're quoting the word in prayer, not just in your everyday talking. That's important too. But in prayer, God, what God is telling you is, Take my words and tell them back to me that you believe them and they will come to pass and I have something to work with. And we learned about that this week. And he said, uh, yeah, and uh, through the instrumentality of every prayer and supplication for need, praying at every season by means of the spirit and maintaining a constant alertness in the same with every kind of unremitting care and supplication for all the saints. Notice he's telling you to pray for all the other saints all the time too. And on behalf of me, he says, Paul's writing, in order that there might be given me utterance in the opening of my mouth in every fearless, confident freedom of speaking to make known the mystery of the good news on behalf of which I am an ambassador in a chain in order that in it I may speak with every fearless and confident freedom as it is necessary in the nature of the case for me to speak. That's what all of that means if you go back into Ephesians 6. Now, what I'll try to do, uh, and we're working on some things here that whenever, because all my, all all my notes, this is is all scripture. There's no notes. It's just scripture, right? And well, scripture, and then there is like a definition of a Greek word or something like that. I have the definition there. Um, But what I want to start doing is 
if I can get the, the problem is I don't always have these ready before we deliver them. But if I can get them either before, during, or right after or something, we're going to try to start uploading these on the website so that you can get the outlines. And if you might not be able to go along with them with me right then, at least you'll be able to take it and study it later, and you'll be able to pull these things out. Plus, you could go back online and uh, you know watch the video or whatever it is and get a hold of that. Amen? But now, do, do, do you say those, those are two things right there? Renew your mind, put on the whole armor of God, right? That, that's how you resist the devil. And if you do that, now, there's more, obviously, there's more. When you talk about all the armor of God, there's more to each piece of this. But bottom line, that's where you start. That's how you get it done. So that could be your, your focus of study would be in renewing, renewing your mind and in having put on the armor of God and keeping it on. Now, that, what that means is you're not doing that every day, getting up, going through the thing, you know, going through this ritual thing of doing this, now I'm putting this on, because you can say it all day long and still not be doing it. But when you do it, you put it on, you keep it on, and you start to walk. And somebody says, well, you know, I don't think you're saved. No, no, no you understand. My feet are shod. You're not, you're not going to move me. Well, yeah, but, you know, uh, you, you, you're, you're not right with God. No, excuse me. I have on my breastplate, so you can't take it off. Why? I am righteous because he made me righteous, Amen. and I am righteous Amen. because I do righteous because he made me righteous because what you are is what you do, and what you do is what you are. See, that's how all that works out. And so it doesn't matter what they say, meaning the devil speaking through them, you have the armor of God on, Hallelujah. and they're not going to sway you. Yes. Amen? And you can see him coming, and you'll know how to stand against him and use the word of God to be able to stop him. Amen?